What's going on guys? This is Solomon SK for Coffee and RPGs and I know it's been a while so I do thank you for your guys' patience and support over these past few months but anyways we do have lots to talk about and one of the things that uh, a lot of people are buzzing about is the fact that Microsoft has just purchased Activision Blizzard for almost uh, 70 billion dollars and we'll go ahead and go over some of the articles covering that but we also have some other MMO and RPG news including a real life strike but in game of sorts which is really interesting a tiny little bit more information regarding Riot's MMO based on the League of Legends universe New World has disabled character creation for all of its game across the entirety of all its servers. And Final Fantasy XIV is getting a Halloween event in uh, January, oddly enough. So go ahead and join me with your cup of coffee or beverage of choice as we go over these articles. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Cheers, everyone. All right, so let's go ahead and get this one out of the way since it's like the biggest news so far of 2022 and everybody's talking about it. Uh, but this next article comes from PCGamer.com. Yeah, PC Gamer. And it says here that Microsoft will acquire Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion. And uh, <laughs> it's just insane the amount of cash on hand that Microsoft has and just willing to spend for these companies and whatnot. And it does go on to say here that it will make Microsoft the world's third largest gaming company by revenue. And uh, I'm kind of curious what the first two is, although I have a sneaky suspicion that number one is going to be Tencent. I believe, uh, yeah, just because they're just everywhere now. Uh, obviously the biggest market in China, but that's neither here nor there. And yes, this is uh, happening still. Um, regardless of what's going on with Activision Blizzard, because uh, if you didn't know already, they're going through a little bit of a hiccup right now when it comes to employee misconduct. Let's just put it that way, to put it mildly. Uh, as it says here that Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer clarified that Bobby Kotick will continue uh, in his position as CEO of, of Activision Blizzard for the time being, though staff will begin reporting directly to Spencer once the transaction closes. And so this is something a lot of bit, a lot of people have been wanting. They've been wanting uh, Kotick to uh, resign because apparently or allegedly he's also been involved with some of the misconduct, if you will. And so... I mean, either way, I think Microsoft knows what they're doing. I think Microsoft is aware of what's going on within the company, and maybe this uh, acquisition will help shape up uh, Blizzard Activision to uh, in a in a right direction, let's say. But uh, in either event, I think this is something that a lot of people wanted. Um, and yeah, I guess at the very least, I guess he has a a month, maybe a few weeks. I don't know how long this transaction is supposed to take, how long it's supposed to take, uh, but uh, now I know one of the concerns when Microsoft bought out Bethesda, Zenimax, and all the other companies belonging to that sort of group uh, is the fact that now maybe Microsoft will make the next Fallout games an exclusive uh, of the sorts. And that's been a, wor a worry for a lot of PlayStation fans out there, or even PC fans for that matter. But not to worry, at least for now, as we go on to GamesRadar.com for their article here. And it says that Activision games will be, quote, enjoyed on a variety of platforms despite the Xbox takeover. I, you know, uh, who knows what's going to happen a year from now, five, ten years from now. Uh, but at least they're putting gamers... Uh, their their mind at ease for now with uh, you know statements like this and hopefully they don't go back on it uh, but yeah because I don't have an Xbox I haven't owned an Xbox since 360 and I know that a lot of their games come over to the PC anyways not all but most of them do which I really do appreciate uh, but uh, you know what there's a lot of Sony fans out there that also watch this channel and uh, I get exclusives I understand why they do them but at the end of the day, it'd be really nice to be able to play the game that you want to play on the platform that you have because, again, money doesn't grow on trees and being able to afford a really nice gaming rig, a, a PlayStation and an Xbox and a Nintendo is just, it just, that's just a lot of cash. But it does go on to say here that Activision Blizzard games are enjoyed on a variety of platforms and we plan to continue to support those communities moving forward. A press release from Xbox Phil Spencer started or stated earlier today. That's quite the way of dodging the question question of whether or not Microsoft will ultimately make games like Call of Duty and Xbox exclusive and I agree with that like I said for now I mean we're safe but we also have to remember 
a lot of us actually bought Call of Duty using the Steam platform if you're a PC user like I am, but the latest one that actually just came out, you actually have to purchase through their specific platform, which is Origin, I believe, or use the Battle.net. No, it was Battle.net. That's what it was. And uh, yeah, you couldn't just, there was no workaround with that. And it doesn't seem like they will actually release um, the latest Call of Duty game specifically for Steam. Although maybe if you, or if Steam has a lot of cash, they'll just pay it out like <laughs> Epic Games does or something for timed exclusives and whatnot. But anyways, and lastly, it does go on to say here that while Microsoft is leaving things up in the air, a Bloomberg report may have shed some more light on the subject. The outlet cites a source familiar with Microsoft's thinking as saying that the company plans to make some Activision Blizzard games available for the PlayStation platform, but will also ho hold back exclusive content for the Xbox platform. We can see in-game content in Call of Duty made available for Xbox players only, for example, and that might include Xbox specific skins for your guns and your character and whatnot, or maybe even exclusive DLCs for a particular game that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Again, not a huge fan of that, but I understand why they do it just because they want to drive their platform um, and increase sales for those. But uh, I guess it's not too bad considering at least it's better than nothing, I guess, but I don't know. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think about this whole, whole ordeal, whether or not you support it or not. Do you think it's actually going to make the company better? Um, is it going to make it worse, maybe? Or I don't know. In either way, the stuff that I covered so far, it's just surface level things, actually. Matter of fact, Devin Nash just released a video about an hour ago. And knowing him, his knowledge of the gaming industry is just completely just vast and just superior to mine in every way i definitely want to check out that video and see what his take on uh this whole situation and whatnot so definitely recommend going over to his channel checking out that video and plethora of other channels out there but definitely let me know what you think just because again everything i covered is surface level it's only skin deep and uh, i would love to know your thoughts just to kind of expand my own and really quick let's head on back over to pcgamer.com and this is a little bit of a follow-up uh, I'm going to connect all this together and we'll go ahead and get some of the MMO and RPG news out of the way here. But it says here that Phil Spencer thinks Sony's rumored Game Pass equivalent is a good idea. And I would completely support this because as of right now, the Game Pass for the Xbox is absolutely killing it. A lot of players generally have very favorable uh, views and opinions about the Xbox Game Pass, saying that you get the most bang for your buck, being able to play all these games with just one simple monthly subscription. Yeah, and it goes on to say that this is a rumor still as of late and a combination of a PlayStation Plus and a PlayStation Now uh, that it tends to launch in the spring is very beneficial for the company, hopefully to be able to compete with Microsoft now that Microsoft owns Activision Blizzard. And so the pressure is on for Sony to step up their game, that's for sure. Spencer does go on to say that I don't mean to sound like we have it all figured out, but I think the right answer is allowing your customers to play the games they want to play, where they want to play them, and giving them the choice about how they build their library and being transparent with them about what our plans are in terms of our PC initiatives and across or in our cross-gen initiatives and among other things as well. I completely butchered that quote, but you get the idea. He Overall, he's saying that it's a good idea. And the reason being, as we head on over to gamesradar.com here in this next article, it says that Xbox Game Pass exceeds 25 million subscribers and more Activision Blizzard games are coming. And so, yeah, Sony definitely needs a way to compete. Again, a lot of the stuff, or a lot of the games rather, from the Game Pass or just uh, the Xbox gaming scene in general ultimately comes out for the PC. And we actually been seeing a lot of Sony games come out, coming out for the PC, which I really do think is, is just really awesome with God of War that just came out a few days ago. Um, and it has like a, like a 90% positive review, which is really awesome. I'm really enjoying the fact that a lot of companies, you know, from both sides, if there is a both sides, uh, from Microsoft and Sony. Oh, and don't forget Nintendo. They just released Monster Hunter Rise for the PC. And that also came out just about a week ago as well. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely appreciative of all these uh, companies out there making their exclusives for the PC and uh, I know maybe that sounds a little bit selfish because I am a PC player at the end of the day um, 
But, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say, <laughs> but, uh, and speaking of God of War, we head on back over to PCGamer.com, and it says here that God of War is Sony's biggest PC launch to date, and this includes all the Soul series, uh, the Horizon Dawn series and whatnot, and, uh, yeah, it's... It's at a good place right now for the PC port. As of January 16th, uh, it had a concurrent user uh, population of almost 74,000 players on the Steam database alone. And it has, let's see, an impressive 97% positive rating, which is overwhelmingly positive on the Steam charts. And so, yeah, I've been watching my friend play this game and I really want to pick it up myself. Uh, I've never been able to play much of the God of War series just because I don't have a PlayStation. Haven't had a PlayStation since PlayStation 3. Uh, and so, yeah, this is something that I really want to get into myself just because uh, really good story, really good dynamic between Kratos and his son. Now, I want to imagine or imagine with me rather that you're playing your favorite MMORPG, whether it be World of Warcraft, New World, Guild Wars 2, Black Tales and Online, whatever it is, right? And you have a group of people that play a specific class or specific or has a specific uh, profession. And because maybe for whatever reason, the company isn't really um, listening to what your needs are and what your wants are. All the like, say, like all the rogues in World of Warcraft decide to be, you know what? We're we're striking. We're not going to play anymore. Or better yet, maybe all the healers. If you main a healer and you're like, you know, what, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Uh, maybe you play. The new world and maybe one of the factions is like you know what none of us are going to fight anymore we're just gonna just completely not play until amazon decides to listen to us or something well that's kind of what's going on in this game in their next article it says here that logistics players in an mmo war game foxhole go on strike and it says here that a group of players wants people to stop taking on the essential role until the developer make changes and so from what i could tell there's a group of players that kind of play behind the scenes where you provide all the resources, the ammo, and then you have players that are actually playing on the front lines. And, you know, they're having the most fun because they're actually out there doing all the shooting. And the people who are stuck doing all the support roles aren't seeing any action. Maybe they're just being bored or they're just being treated different, differently. And so everybody who plays those support roles decide Hey, we're not going to play this game anymore. And so that kind of leaves all the players that play in the front lines, for example, without any resources, without any ammo, without any support. <laughs> so, I mean, it's interesting to say the least, but I thought, well, then, okay, then those front line players will just switch classes, right? But this is, a, I guess, a survival MMO. So it may not be that simple as uh, just switching to another tune. Um, but either way, this kind of sucks, I guess, because it does, it would bring the entire um, funness of the game down. But at the end of the day, I understand. Like, if they're constantly voicing their concern about the game and they're not being heard, then I suppose you're going to take drastic measures like this, you know? But I never thought that people would actually do it within an MMO. <laughs> That's, that is so unreal. Out of all my years playing MMOs, I don't think I've ever read or heard or seen anything like that before uh i'll definitely keep you guys posted and let's see if the strike actually works out maybe the devs actually will start listening all right guys so really quick i wanted to cover this just because it's just so unusual and it says here in their next article this peanut butter made for gamers actually sounds delicious uh i want to order one I i'm not gonna lie i love gimmicks this is just ordinary peanut butter just uh uh, marketed for gamers so obviously there's really there's really nothing special about it other than the branding but hey it's enough for me to want to kind of do a uh, i wouldn't know like a i wouldn't call it an unboxing video but just like a first uh uh weirdness video like i think i think that kind of video would do well like peanut butter uh for gamers <laughs> it's got crunchy mixed in frozen fruits Oh, I'm sorry. It got crunchy, mixed in frozen fruits, and is designed to be eaten with a spoon. Uh, yeah, a lot of innuendos in this article. So I'm scrolling down and I see an image of this, and that <laughs> it doesn't look very appetizing. <laughs> Granted, this isn't all peanut butter. There's stuff inside, right? There's like bits of fruits, as I, as I said earlier. But uh, um, unfortunately, they don't 
ship to the United States. They only ship to South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, Scotland, out of all the places, which is weird. Uh, but you can't email them. You can uh, get one specially ordered. You just have to talk to somebody within the company, which is Joby or Joby, however you pronounce it. I do apologize. Uh, but yeah, I actually contacted them and they'll, uh, they said they're going to email me a quote. <laughs> to get a bottle of this and uh, I'll definitely make a video about it just because it's just so unusual but uh anyways moving on next we'll head on over to mmorpg.com for a few articles and it says here in the first one that upcoming indie mmo freeland looks to bring vr and pc players together and this one's really interesting to me just because of the fact that i've never heard of this mmorpg uh or just mmo in general i suppose and i really love hearing about some of the different things out there uh with regards to mmos that i never heard of but what makes this more interesting than say other games in a similar um position i guess you could say is the fact that it's not completely vr me personally i, I think vr can be fun but it's super niche um might be even gimmicky to a certain extent or maybe a large extent rather i don't necessarily know if it's like the greatest end game thing for gaming i don't necessarily know that if all our monitors that we use here will be replaced by vr necessarily maybe with the metaverse that's coming out by facebook it has the potential to doing that maybe i don't know but at the end of the day i really do like when companies give you a choice um i know like in phasmophobia you could actually play with mouse and keyboard but if you have a vr headset you could actually play with that too and play with uh play together with your friends and whatnot and so again freeland looks interesting um looks a bit crude to be honest with you but it is a vr game and so i shouldn't judge it too harshly compared to some of the other mmos that are already out there in the market but i know what you're thinking one of the games that you probably compare this game to would be zenith the last city i didn't even know they changed their name i know it was called zenith uh whereas zenith is just completely vr as far as i can tell um and uh yeah unless you have one of these expensive rigs you won't be able to play zenith uh, but at the end of the day, this looks like it's also a crowdfunded MMO. Now, bear with me. I know I'm probably going to be rambling off just a little bit more than usual with this particular article, just because I want to be sure I get all the details. But in their next article here, it says that Riot's MMO executive producer hints at group play focus in their upcoming MMO. And just a reminder, again, this MMO is based on the League of Legends uh, franchise or lore universe whatever you want to call it which is a good thing in my opinion because it's really rich with a lot of characters that a lot of people seem to resonate with and uh, it goes on to say here that the MMOs devoted to group content versus catering the players who want to solo it is a hot topic around any upcoming game in a genre especially as more and more MMOs move away from forcing groups to complete content and this is something I completely agree with the level of group content that you had to be uh, involved with in order to progress the story or get an item or upgrade your character and whatnot was certainly prevalent, especially in the days when World of Warcraft first came out and the MMOs that came out uh, during that time period. But you have so many MMOs out there that you could pretty much complete by yourself. I think the glaring example of this one would be Star Wars The Old Republic. Like, you could complete the entire storyline without having to group up with a single player. Matter of fact, they have this event in Dantooine. I completely forgot what it was called. It's not the racing one. Um, and there are these four heroic uh, instances that you um, have to get through in order to maximize your rewards and credits and whatnot. And uh, you have to group up with three other people. And one of the people that I was grouped up with said, I completely forgot that this is a multiplayer MMO game. Um, because again, you just could breeze through the entire, uh, game without having to party with a single person, right? So what's the point of making it an MMO? Well, some might say there is that camaraderie. There's the, uh, comfort of knowing that there are other people playing around you, even if you don't directly play with them and see them and just being able to, uh, I guess share each other's company with the, within the game is uh, comforting to a lot of people um, certainly with me with a lot of the MMOs that I play I, I completely get that uh, but you also have games like ESO where you know single player content is really huge right now Final Fantasy 14 although there are group content out there as well but uh, their focus is on the storyline which again you could actually progress through with with, uh, with the vast majority of just playing by yourself from what I can tell I haven't 
played it in a while, but anyways, you get the idea. Now, if you scroll down, there is this talk between uh, the executive producer yeah executive producer and uh, i guess one of the fans of the of, of the game right now and he kind of gives like the seafood analogy but at the end of the day i think this really sums it up here uh his last name is street which i think is really cool but street also answered another question about the design approach of the mmo as a whole when asked if riot's approach is more of a this is how we want our MMO to be, take it or leave it, or whether it'll be driven by community forces. Street answered that it's closer to the former, former excuse me. And he goes on to say that uh, this will be vague, but our philosophy is that if you wanna play a single player game, there are great ones out there. Horizon, God of War, Persona, uh, shout out to Pathfinder. If you wanna play games with a community though, with friends, then play our MMO. And lastly, we won't try to appeal to everyone that doesn't lead to great art. And so, yeah, I support his decision in a firm stance on the direction that they want to take this game. Again, if they, I have to agree, if they want to play uh, or make a great single player game, then they wouldn't have to make it an MMO. But the fact that this is an MMO where, uh, again, you're, it's a massively multiplayer online game, uh, and if you're going to be in a multiplayer game, then have the opportunity or have the at least capabilities if, that makes any sense to be able to group up with people and even if it's forced i mean again i don't really mind that either it kind of allows people to force them outside of the comfort zone and i know that's not a very popular thing to say maybe but i think in a lot of cases actually quite beneficial as you're able to form relationships and talk to other people while you're playing the game but that's just me let me know down in the comment section below how you think uh, the game should be made whether or not you support mmos that has a vast single player content or maybe games actually should provide or force people to group up with one another um not all the time maybe sometimes like they do in the new world for example but uh yeah let me know down in the comment section below and let me know what your thoughts are and just really quick it says here celebrate the ferocious black tiger's gift in arc age for rewards the reason why i wanted to cover this is because they just celebrated or in uh currently celebrating their ninth anniversary for this game and I can't believe it's already been nine years for this game. Uh, truth be told, I thought this game would have gone offline already considering the vast, vast uh, um, number of opinions, uh, negative opinions rather, <laughs> saying how uh, this game is just flooded with pay to win items and playing Arc Age Unchained. Uh, yeah, I believe those criticisms. And it definitely didn't sit well with me when they, I believe they merged the Arc Aged uh, arc age sir or unchained servers with their normal servers or something like that and i mean i still have huge hopes for arc age 2 i really hope that they do well at the end of the day i know i believe it's crafton or cacao games or one of those two actually bought xl games or something like that and um yeah uh i completely forgot what the situation was but in any event i know jake song look forward to the deal and he's if he's able to prove his critics wrong by doing arc age right and what i mean by right is uh you know limiting the pay to win items because it's it was pretty bad it's pretty bad in arc age um which further again digressing again proves that it's the whales pretty much that <laughs> make the game afloat as with uh, the cases with uh, star star trek online and to some extent black does it online um yeah, it, 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 he he might be able to redeem himself with uh, with part two, but again, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And in other events, we got Guild Wars 2, as it says here, celebrate the year of the tiger with the Lunar New Year event in Guild Wars 2. Um, and another thing that I wanted to briefly mention was the fact that they, uh, or they rather, ArenaNet is working on trying to bring World vs. World PvP back into the game from what I understand from the article. And again, if I could digress just a little bit, that kind of surprised me to hear that, considering I haven't played this game for a number of years. World versus, or World versus World in this game was actually a lot of fun to be able to defend and attack castles using siege weapons. Not only that, the amount of people that you actually could have on your screen, yet your computer ran surprisingly smooth was something that really blew me away at the time when this game first came out and this was like almost 10 years ago now that i think about it take for example star wars the old republic their end game planet in terms of pvp was ilum and you'd be lucky enough if you ran 10 frames with 
five dozen people. <laughs> it was that bad because the engine that they use is just so terrible. But anyways, that's just a different story. But anyways, yeah, if you play Guild Wars 2 or want to, you got something to look forward to. And uh, hopefully they get a lot better, especially that they have the Cantha expansion coming out pretty soon as well. And really quick again, if you are somebody who is looking into Lost Ark, uh, maybe you're caught up with the whole hype, don't know anything about the game. Well, the devs actually created a video showcasing some of the things that you could do in the game in a beginner's perspective, how to play the game. Uh, how to navigate through the UI and whatnot, and so I highly recommend this video. Uh, I'll definitely will be checking it out just because it's been a while since I played the game, a um, number of years, and uh, didn't know what I was doing because that it wasn't in English. But uh, yeah, I definitely am looking forward to this MMO. Uh, just a reminder that it is coming out on February 11th, which is about three weeks from recording of this video. Definitely be doing a review for that and just kind of covering it uh, because, yeah, it's still significantly really popular over in South Korea and in Russia, uh, Southeast Asia in general and whatnot. And so if it's able to hold a significant, healthy player base there, um, I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that it could do quite well, well here. Obviously, I don't think it's going to crank out WoW numbers. I don't think it's going to crank out Final Fantasy 14 numbers, but you don't have to to be successful. And uh, really looking forward, to, uh, looking forward to this one regardless. Now, I know if I'm going to do this video with a particular title and thumbnail I'm thinking about, uh, it's a bit clickbaity. I get it. Uh, I mean, there's other things going on possibly here, but in their next article, it does say that New World has disabled... Uh, character creation globally um and that's not really good news just on a s surface level if you want to say but not even on just the surface level it's just not good news at all because what if they had players or people who actually wanted to play the game and purchased it and you can't create a character so what else are you gonna do either drive those players away or i don't know uh but in any event it's not as doom and gloom as you might think or what I portray it to be, perhaps? Maybe, well, well, hear me out. It does go on to say here that the community has been speculating as to why this is happening, with some considering it might be a step taken in order to combat exploiting, especially when it comes to botting, which is not a bad guess. The New World team uh, has already shifted the reward system from, or for new accounts, rather, making the rewards equivalent, but rewarding greater gold and items later in the main uh, storyline or questline rather uh, they even disabled server transfers for new characters discontinuing the free transfer tokens they had been giving out in order to help the initial uh, the initially affected player base and uh, yeah so just reading on it seems like they are doing this for legitimate reasons just reading that headline you might think oh they're they're gonna close the game now they're uh, not letting people create new characters because uh, they don't want to have to go through the refunding process and whatnot. Hey, maybe that's true, too. I don't know. Um, it does have a pretty significant Twitch uh, presence, although obviously it's not as big as when the f game first came out. I know Shroud still continues to play this game and everybody's been uh, kind of like questioning him. Like, why, why do you continue to play New World when it's uh, dead, for lack of a better term? And... I believe he said something like the game still has a lot of potential and he seems to enjoy it a lot despite what other people uh, want him to play or whatnot. But I don't know. That's just kind of uh, my opinion on things. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Maybe this is doom and gloom. Maybe this is the final nail in the coffin for uh, New World or maybe it's just uh, not as big of a deal as people are making it out to be. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with the game. Uh, personally speaking, I'm only level 41 or 42. Uh, I'm usually somebody who will play an MMO, especially an MMO, and try to rush in game as soon as possible to be the first to get the best gear, the best loot and whatnot. But this time around, I didn't really want to do that. I just been going around and leveling my crafting uh, professions, my gathering professions and whatnot. And I'm having, I've been having a lot of fun just doing that rather than just uh, doing all the end game content right off the bat and in their next article it says here that blade and soul adds a third soul fighter specialization new dungeon and sixth anniversary event six years for this game huh i thought it was out longer but i, I don't know why it's just it's just a feeling <laughs> but uh uh, anyways, this is definitely one of those games where I always wanted to go back to, but I just never did. I mean, they had the whole 
um, graphic engine update, and even then, I told myself, oh yeah, I'll get back into it, and I never did, unfortunately. I have to. I've been saying that for years. If you've been following my channel for a while, you guys know that I've always said, oh, I always wanted to go back to Billion Soul, and I never have, but uh, I should put you know the my, my, my money where my mouth is and just finally just start downloading it and just see what's out but uh yeah if you're a soul fighter you get a specialization i never played a soul fighter myself uh they came out with this class uh after i stopped playing unfortunately i have very fond memories of the destroyer that's for sure playing the the gun race just absolute huge bulking people and whatnot but uh if you still play this game convince me convince me to finally download this game and play it like ASAP. I want to be convinced. And so, uh, all the Blade of Soul fans out there, all one and a half of you, let me know down in the comment section below. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Slight dig. Um, as to why uh, I should start playing this game again, because I want to be convinced. Not going to spend a whole lot of time with this one, but I thought it'd be worth mentioning anyways, just because I know there's a lot of Disney fans out there, uh, even Avatar fans. I know the second movie is supposed to come out or something, or maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, it does say here that Avatar Reckoning uh, Disney and Tencent reveals Unreal Engine 4 MMO or mobile MMO shooter. Uh, that mobile part to totally just, I'm like, yeah, like whatever. Not really an MMO or I'm sorry, not really a mobile player per se. Although there are a few that I do enjoy playing, but generally not something that, um, not really my cup of tea. Uh, but yeah, Tencent and Disney, if you are a fan of those or Avatar, and if you're into shooters, uh, in even to a lesser extent MMOs, uh, you have something to look forward to. Um, but yeah, just wanted to briefly mention that really quick. Now, Genshin Impact is one of those games that is still doing tremendously well, has a very large following, and people seem to really enjoy it, despite the fact that it's still a gotcha game at the end of the day. Um, and we're at altchart.com. There isn't one specific article that I wanted to go over, but they seem to really love Genshin Impact leaks. And as you see here, Genshin Impact, uh, yay, Miko icon changes have been leaked. Um, let's see. Genshin Impact, Ayato, Elemental Skill, and Burst Description leaked. Uh, Genshin Impact Elite reveals another set of Miko's buffs. <laughs> and uh, Genshin Impact 2.5, new line breaker enemy has been revealed. Not necessarily leaked, but more Genshin Impact news. So I'll definitely leave a link down in the pinned comment section below if you want to check it out yourself. But uh, there isn't one particular leak I wanted to go really in detail. But just to let you know, there is a lot of information that is out there with regards to the next biggest update, which is 2.5. Next, let's head on over to GameSpeed.com for a few articles. And this is definitely going to cater to... Uh, all the people who grew up on the old school JRPGs and whatnot, a little bit more or less, but it says here that Yeast 9 Monstrum Nox's new PC co op mode lets you share the adventure. And in my opinion, they're kind of going more towards a Genshin Impact uh mechanic look and feel whatever you want to call it and i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to be able to play uh a tried and true classic jrpg franchise but be, to be able to play it with your friends is something i don't think yeast has ever done and it says here towards the bottom uh but if you are if you're already thinking about who you can enlist to fight the forces of evil there's a catch as explained in the update notes the co-op mode is strictly experimental and right now it's only available on the pc it may take or it may make its way to consoles at some point but that's been yet to be confirmed and so it's kind of like a beta test i guess if you will if you want to be able to play with your friends within the realm of yeast and so uh i look forward to this uh if you look at the trailer that i got playing below me it's definitely uh more modern uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. They, you know, change with the times. And this is part nine, after all, that we're talking about in this series. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Even more so than Blade and Soul, admittedly. <laughs> okay. Now, I know Fractured is a game that I covered before, but it's been so long. I don't, I don't remember anything about this game, unfortunately. But I'm glad it's back in the news to kind of help remind me of what's out there. And it says here from uh, MMO, no, no, I'm sorry, MassivelyOP.com, excuse me, that Survival MMO Fractured Veil shows off new building pieces, outlines 2022 dev plans. They promised a series of new housing items uh, as it gets released. And it goes on to say that the preview also offered a brief rundown of the game's plans for 2022, including introduction of Veil Travel, upgrading to Unreal 4.0. 27 bringing in three more waves of backers and introducing skills and talents to the game 
a timeline for all of these updates wasn't provided but hey you got to look at all kinds of stylish new buildings and items in the meantime and as a refresher of course this is something uh that i definitely need a refresher of it says here that fractured veil is a self-described open world online survival game set in a post-apocalyptic version of hawaii that just sounds so contradictory <laughs> well maybe the lava and all the things burning around it maybe i don't know uh we first caught notice of this in february of 2021 when developer paddle creek was looking for testers the game has reportedly been in development for five years prior to its kickstarter campaign which made over its hundred thousand dollar funding ask last month Developers of the survival box has been moving at a pace ever since as summarized in a 2021 roundup And so good on them hundred thousand dollars That's actually a lot of cash and I really hope they could actually crank out a really good survival MMO with that kind of money I'll definitely keep you guys posted as to how this game is developing along not necessarily my cup of tea admittedly But uh, hey, you know, like I said, I'm willing to try out different things out there uh, even survival MMOs apparently, but anyways, now I definitely heard of WebZen, but I don't think I've ever heard of this particular MMO. Unfortunately, it's closing down and it says here that WebZen is closing down five-year-old Moo Origin in the West. And if you are a fan of this game, I do apologize. You have my condolences. It's never a good story or it's never a good thing when MMOs shut down, especially to all the players who remain dedicated to the game for all those years. I completely understand how frustrating that could be, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I know nothing about this particular game, but uh, um, in case you do or have played before and you want to kind of quickly uh, experience it for yourself before the online or before the sh servers do shut down you have until march 31st so that kind of gives you about two months to uh, i guess reminisce or whatever you want to do in the game but uh anyways moving on it's all you final fantasy 14 fans out there and i know there's many of you out there uh it says here in their next article that final fantasy 14 details the rewards from its clown filled halloween event for january and uh, admittedly this is the first i've ever heard of an mmo doing a seasonal event off season uh i like it though uh, but uh there's a reason why and it says here that we've never been given an explanation for why exactly final fantasy 14 has delayed its halloween event this year until well very shortly now <laughs> the event kicks off on january 20th which is two days from recording of this video uh which is weird but hey if you want to dress up like a clown the event has you covered as revealed in the latest official blog entry previewing all of the various rewards you can get from the event and so yeah they delayed it instead of scrapping the event altogether and waiting for october of 2022 you get it in january like i'm not knocking it i think that's actually really cool that they uh decided to go go ahead with through the uh through this event um and uh you'll probably just get two halloween events in the same year and i actually get another one this year in october so uh, yeah good on square enix for you know as the old adage or the saying goes better late than never so anyways everyone i just want to say thank you so much if you made it with me so far with uh today's video because the watch time does help with the algorithms and whatnot and to kind of just uh, let you know what's been going on i decided to take a break I only meant that break to uh, be about a month, but it ended up being three months just because uh, uh, I guess there were just some personal struggles that I had to deal with. Nothing life-threatening, nothing that's really worth mentioning, but I just, I guess I just needed a, a break that was a little longer than usual. But I'm back to making videos. I changed it up a little bit. I'm still studying. There's a bunch of courses that I did buy uh, from really reputable people, and I'm trying to understand more of the algorithms, how to better better um, rank in the search results and whatnot, and uh, some of the changes that you'll see within the video itself. It's going to be a little less polished. Um, one of the things that was the biggest uh, time-consuming part of making videos is editing. Um, just you know, cutting there, cutting there, cutting there, putting it all together, and putting. Uh, the trailers up and whatnot i'm still doing that but i'm not gonna really try to uh you know like right now as as i paused i i would have actually cut that out and or just restarted it all together and but i'm just gonna leave all that in um the less time i spend uh on these videos i feel like it just makes me uh, a little less burnt out because uh overall before i took this break 
it would take me about five to six hours just to make a 15 minute video with all the editing going on, uh, pulling up the articles, highlighting them, uh, putting the overlays with regards to the trailers and whatnot. And it just took so much time. And if I was getting a couple thousand views per video, I don't think I would have really mind that much because at least I could see some growth. But uh, the last video I did that wasn't a 60 second short, it only got like 50 five views and that was kind of a bit discouraging but um at the end of the day i know i cannot give up this is something that i've been wanting to do for such a long time and uh, i just needed a break and just kind of reevaluate my life and you know some of my goals and whatnot and so i'm back uh i won't bore you with all the details with uh my boohoo story but just know that if you guys stuck around and just supported me all these months i really do appreciate it um chaos incorporate i know you're somebody who i um, um would talk to every now and then on twitter and stuff so i really do appreciate your support man it means a lot to me uh and uh, dragon lauren i don't know if you're if you'll see this video i know you're taking a break from making youtube videos which i completely support but when you do get back i'll look forward to that and i'll support you in any way i can um and uh sticks from mmo bite like um you know i still hang on to a lot of the stuff that you said uh, and the advice that you've given me. So I really do appreciate your support as well. And so, uh, anyways, I'll leave it there. Don't want to talk your ear off. Don't want to make this video as, uh, you know, a little uh, too long, longer than it has to be. So with that being said, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I got definitely like links here, wherever it's going to be, uh, if you want to check it out and, uh, hopefully, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Cheers again, everyone. Have a good night.